Today's video is about outlining five common BMAT mistakes I've seen people make, some of which I've made myself, and what you can do to avoid making them for your exam. Hi, my name is Deb and I'm a fifth year medical student studying at Imperial College London. I make videos about student lifestyle, medicine, Imperial and tech. So strap yourselves in and let's jump straight into the video. The first mistake is thinking that the exam is going to be GCSE level. I know that everyone says it's GCSE level, but I'm telling you for a fact that it is not GCSE level. Now, I don't know what kind of GCSEs they carry out in Cambridge, but I found the questions are kind of, you know, pushing AS level standard. So it's really important that you find the right resources that can provide you with the practice for much more harder questions. So you're not going to be caught off guard when the exam really happens. The second mistake is not prioritizing questions appropriately. When you see a difficult question, it's very easy to get carried away and try really long and hard to solve it just because mentally you want to give it your all just for that satisfaction. And chances are, after a long time, you'll probably get the answer. But you've got to remember that this is a very time pressured exam and you don't have a limited time. Every question is worth the same number of marks. So it doesn't matter if the questions are easy or difficult. It's all about playing smart. So I'd say spend roughly about 45 seconds on a question in section one and about 30 seconds on a question in section two. And if you can't answer in that time, just put a mark on it, let go of your ego and move on. If you have time at the end of the exam, of course, then come back to it and then try again. But even if you don't have time, make sure you still put something down as the exam isn't negatively marked. So you still have about a 20% chance of getting the answer right, even if you just guess blindly. Although, I'd recommend making some educated guesses, obviously, you know, by elimination, using your answers to kind of, or the answers given even in the multiple choice to like work your way backwards. The third mistake is wasting your money on countless resources. Just because you're spending a lot of money doesn't necessarily dictate that you're going to be getting more valuable and higher quality content. Very expensive BMAT courses are a prime example of this. Not every resource out there was created equal, so make sure you do your due diligence and not splash out on any course just that, you know, it just claims that it's good. Make sure there are other people that have used it that can vouch for it being good. And on the other end of the spectrum, just because a resource is lower priced doesn't necessarily mean it's of lower quality. A great example of this is this ebook that was created by Medjucas UK, who are kindly sponsoring this segment of the video. Medjucas UK is a company founded by a team of Oxbridge medical students, and I absolutely love what they've been doing. This concise ebook that they've created is next level affordable, it's only £3.50, and it contains high yield practice questions, explanations, examples, and tips and tricks that help them achieve very highly in their BMAT exams. I'll be sure to leave a link to their website and their Instagram in the description down below. And if you're thinking of buying it, make sure you do it quick because you know they might decide to increase their prices very soon. The fourth mistake is only practicing online. I think back in the day when I did it, Loki, it's, it's kind of sad that I can I can actually say that now. We mostly bought books and a lot of the practice was actually done on paper. Now, thanks to iPads and tablets, it's just, you know, it makes a lot more sense to revise on them. It's just more easier. And you can do, you know, all these papers and then just do your you know, questions and then rub them out. And it's basically like resetting the paper. And when you're doing it in person, you know, erasing everything is just so much harder. And then sometimes you can see the old answer. It's just bleh. But despite this, it is crucial that you practice on paper too, because that's how you'll most likely be doing it in the actual exam. And again, you don't want to be thrown off guard. The final mistake is not planning out everything correctly. And this includes both your revision and the exam itself. And in regards to the revision, you need to make sure that you made a full checklist of what topics that you need to cover, what you're good at and what you're bad at and therefore what you need to prioritize first. So structuring your revision in this way is more efficient and will help you keep on track of your progress to see if you're getting better or not really improving. And regards to the actual exam, you need to plan out how you answer each question. And this ties all into revision because certain conditions, <laughs> I'm getting my, getting my doctor mindset here with conditions, certain questions have a certain way of solving, you know, they have a certain way of you need to solve them. And once you've, you know, worked out the fundamentals, you can apply that same principle to similar types of questions. So knowing the plan and how you want to approach a question is very important, um, you know, when a similar kind of subset of questions pop up. And that needs to come to your head like this. 
when you see the question. And of course, with the essay, you know that that needs to be planned. You don't have a lot of time, so you need to be concise and straight to the point and base your paragraphs on the pointers that they give you in the exam. Practicing essay questions at home will obviously help you learn to plan stuff in the essay on the spot, which then you can apply to other essays like those in the exam. I hope that the video has been helpful. My name has been Devify. Peace.